In this video, we discuss the diffraction of light through a circular aperture and Rayleigh's criterion for determining the smallest angular size that can be resolved given the diameter of the aperture and the wavelength of the light. So in the upper left corner here, we start with a quick reminder of one slit diffraction. And I'll post the link to the video where this was first derived. In this picture, we show the way light spreads out when it passes through a thin slit. The red curve on the right shows the intensity of the light as it spreads out on the screen. We have a max intensity right in the center, and we get other maxima off the center, separated by diffraction minima, where the light is destructively interfering. Well, diffraction through a circular aperture is just the circular version of this. If we pass a ray of light through a small circular aperture, the diffraction happens with circular symmetry, and we see a projected pattern like this. This is called an airy pattern, and a cross-section of it through the center would look like a one-slit diffraction pattern. The diffraction of light through a circular aperture causes problems for angular resolution. For example, in the top right picture, if we have two stars relatively close in the sky and the light is coming into the aperture at these slightly different angles, the light from each of those stars is diffracted into an airy disk and I can see that some of that diffraction pattern is overlapping between the two images. Well, at some point, two stars could be close enough where it becomes impossible to tell you're looking at two stars because their diffraction patterns are just too overlapped. So at the bottom right, I have a typical picture of two stars that are decently resolved. So when you look at that picture on the left that says decently resolved, you can clearly tell you're looking at two sources of light. In the picture all the way at the bottom right, my two sources are now so close together that I can't really tell whether or not I'm looking at one thing or two things. So in that case, the two stars just don't have enough angular separation to be resolved. In other words, we've gone below the minimum angle of resolution for our telescope. So what's the cut point where you can say confidently that you can resolve the light from two sources that are very close? The point at which we can barely resolve the two sources occurs when the center of one area pattern lands on the first minimum of the other area pattern. This is called the Raleigh criterion for diffraction limited resolution through a circular aperture. And as it turns out, this can be expressed mathematically as theta equals 1.22 lambda over d, where theta is measured in radians, lambda is the wavelength of the light, and big D is the diameter of the circular aperture. Note that a larger value of the wavelength results in worse angular resolution, so the minimum resolvable angle becomes larger if lambda is larger, meaning you're not going to resolve two point sources unless they're farther apart in the angular sense. This happens because larger wavelengths of light have diffraction patterns that spread out farther than smaller wavelengths of light. In addition, a larger value of D would give you a smaller minimum resolvable angle, in other words, better angular resolution. And a radio telescope gives us an extreme example of this relationship. In an optical telescope, we observe wavelengths on the order of hundreds of nanometers, but a radio telescope makes observations on the order of centimeters to meters for radio waves. So this means the wavelength causes the resolution to be hundreds of thousands of times worse when we use radio waves. To counteract this, we use an enormous aperture size. For example, the radio telescope at Arecibo has a diameter of a thousand feet in order to get decent resolution from radio waves. So we'll wrap things up by applying the Raleigh criterion to a couple simple examples. In the first example, we're told we're walking progressively closer to a page of text. And if you're far enough away, you won't be able to resolve any individual letters. And it's just that the angular separation between features on those letters is below the minimum resolvable angle. As you get closer, the angular size of the letters gets bigger. And at some point you cross over the minimum resolvable angle and you'll begin to see features on the letters. So just as a rough approximation, I'm saying one millimeter features become resolvable when you're standing two and a half meters from the page. And I want to use the Raleigh criterion to estimate the diameter of my pupils. That's the circular aperture. Finally, we're told that we can assume the effective wavelength of light is near the center of the visible spectrum, so about 570 nanometers. So the hard part of this problem is just finding what's the angular size of one millimeter features at a distance of two and a half meters. And my preference for this is to just use the arc length formula, S equals R theta. As long as we're dealing with very small angles, a small section of arc is really the same thing as this linear feature of one millimeter size. And the distance to that feature is two and a half meters. 
Again, those are related by the formula S equals R theta, where S is a little increment of arc, R is the radius of the sector, and theta is the angle included in that sector. And this is going to give you the angle in radians, which is convenient because that's what we're plugging in to the Raleigh criterion. So I get S over R. That's one millimeter over two and a half meters. And this gives me an angle of four times 10 to the negative four radians. So this is the cut point where I've just crossed over the minimum resolvable angle. So now I have what I need to plug in to the Raleigh criterion formula and solve for the diameter of my pupils. I'm going to do that symbolically first. Multiply by D on both sides and divide by theta. So I get 1.22 lambda over theta measured in radians. This gives me 0 0.00174 meters. And if I express that in millimeters, that's 1.74 millimeters for the diameter of my pupils. In the next example, we're looking at a radio telescope. And we're told we're making observations at a wavelength of 0 0.1 meters or 10 centimeter radio waves using a radio telescope with diameter 1,000 feet. So that's the Arecibo telescope. And in SI units, that's 305 meters. And I want to compute the limit of angular resolution for these observations. In other words, the angle given by the Raleigh criterion. What's the smallest resolvable angle in the sky? Finally, we're asked to express our answer in degrees. So we'll start by getting our minimum resolvable angle in radians. And I plug in 0.1 for the wavelength, 305 for the diameter of the aperture. And this gives me a minimum resolvable angle of 4 times 10 to the negative 4 radians. That's just coincidentally the same number as the previous problem. Now I need to convert this to degrees. So there are 360 degrees for every 2 pi radians. Into 3 sig figs, this gives me 0 0.0229 degrees. If you find the physics content on Zach's Lab helpful, click on the Zach's Lab logo on the right to browse playlists and subscribe to the channel. I produce over 100 new videos per month and subscribing is the easiest way to find new content. Thanks for watching.